All right, what's going on guys and welcome back. So many of you already probably know about the situation where Pokemon uh, issued a statement regarding Pal World. They didn't name it specifically, but we know who they're talking about. And, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about what this could mean because I feel like a lot of people on the internet are just saying, oh, this means Nintendo's going to sue or, oh, they acknowledged it, but didn't sue. So therefore, you know, it's all fine. And I don't want to sit on any side of this Pal World debate because I'm the type of person I want to see what is legal. Okay, you, you can have your opinions about some of the designs. I think some of the designs, you know, maybe flew a little too close to the sun. But I want to know about what the legality of all this is. And that's what I'm interested in. I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, the models were ripped. Because number one, there has been evidence to say that they weren't ripped. They were Now some people are saying they're traced. Other people are saying they were like freehand copied. Uh, you know, before they were saying it was AI, even though there was no proof of that other than the CEO likes AI or whatever. So there's a lot of just things happening. Even with the whole death threat situation, where Bucky was receiving death threats, some YouTuber decided uh, to make it about like PlayStation versus Xbox and that had to get corrected. So just a lot of misinformation, a lot of people just saying things and I'm not super interested in this drama. I'm more so interested in the actual legal battle um, that may or may not even exist. So Business Insider put out an article um, about this. They basically say that like Nintendo plans to investigate and take appropriate measures after a competitor launched a new game where the characters, fans say, bear striking resemblances to Pokemon characters. And then they go into PAL World, you know, 2 million peak, here's a trailer, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, th this is the thing I don't like that a lot of these people do. There are good comparisons if you're looking to say, like, oh, this bird looks kind of like Braviary and Staraptor, or, oh, the, you know, the, the top of this thing's head looks like um, Primarina. You're gonna use Vulpix as a comparison? It's a Firefox on four legs. Like, come on, man. It's it, like, the Vulpix line is based off of a Japanese mythology. So are you saying like Naruto copied Vulpix too? Like, like I, I don't like it when people do stuff like this because you know what? If you have an argument about plagiarism and, and, and you know, copying and inspiration versus, you know, ripping something off as it were, th this is not the way to go about it. Because if I was someone on Twitter, that was just scrolling past all of this and i saw this this just looks inspired if anything right if you want to talk about plagiarism and you want to hold those accusations which by the way guys if you have a following and you're just saying that something's plagiarized or saying that something's ripped off and you're not 100 percent sure you better be careful because if that causes them to lose sales and it turns out that no <laughs> it was actually not plagiarized like they you know, uh, figure it out in court or whatever, you are technically liable. I don't think they would do this because it would just look terribly on PR, but technically like if you're wrong and you're making definitive statements, you could be, you know, liable for um, damages regarding defamation, right? So that's why I'm not making any concrete statements about it. I I've seen, you know, some people say the proportions are too similar. Um, uh, you know, someone was saying that, you know, part of the models got, um, Part of the models being like exactly the same got debunked because of like resizing and stuff like that. I'm not super interested in that. I want to talk about what Nintendo said and what I, why I think a lot of people are, um, you know, jumping the gun and what these sort of different things we could end up seeing as a result of this are. And I want to just discuss them a little bit. So here we go. <laughs> Inquiries and sorry, not Nintendo, the Pokemon company, but you know, they're under Nintendo. So inquiries regarding other companies games. We have received many inquiries regarding another company's game. Now, one thing I did think was interesting, um, they said regarding companies' names as plural, plural, sorry, in this one. I don't know if that's a typo, but I just do find it interesting that they said companies as a plural, and now they're talking about a single company. So maybe they've been receiving um, inquiries about like other companies as well, but you know, with the whole Power World situation, I think Power World does have the closest monsters in a monster taming game we've ever seen to Pokemon. So I don't think other... Mo I'm going to make a whole video about this, but I don't think other monster taming games are even close to uh, in danger because all of them make their own unique designs. Whereas, you know, again, there's been a lot of uh, controversy regarding some of the Power World designs and the models and stuff like that. But again, nothing concrete, nothing that's been proven in court. Um, so... They say, we have not granted any permission for the use of Pokemon intellectual property or assets in that game. We intend to investigate and take appropriate measures to address any acts that infringe on intellectual property rights related to Pokemon. 
we will continue to cherish and nurture each and every Pokemon in its world and work to bring the world together through Pokemon in the future, the Pokemon Company. So that last sentence, I think, was to sort of just be like, oh, look, you know, we still care about things and this and that. Like, that was just PR. All right, don't worry about that. We want to worry about the part that's um, we have not granted any permission for the use of Pokemon and, and, and then we intend to investigate. So there's a couple things. This could either mean A, which a lot of people are saying, they're uh, collecting evidence and then looking into, uh, you know, suing them for copyright infringement. If that goes down, they could also sue for like lost potential sales, right? So, you know, Power World selling all these millions of copies. How is that going to negatively impact Pokemon's bottom line? And, um, you know, may maybe they'll sit, they'll have a settlement outside of court in that case. Uh, maybe the, the monsters that are too similar for... Uh, you know, two Pokemon will have to be removed and replaced, or maybe the game gets shut down. We don't know exactly how that would be ruled. Again, this is all Japanese copyright, which is very different from America and Canada. Uh, the, the other part of this that I don't think a lot of people are really reading into, um, Pokemon wants people to stop emailing them. <laughs> they like, like I'm sure they're getting thousands, if not tens of thousands of emails regarding uh, Power World from Pokemon fans that are, you know, either just, you know, going on the on the uh, on the power world boycott sort of bandwagon and just mass emailing them or people that are gen genuinely concerned i think it's mostly the prior just based on how the internet works but that's just me and um the third thing we can also uh, extrapolate from this is that we know they took down the mod um there was a pokemon mod that got dmca so we know they're looking into this and a lot of people are saying that because they did that but didn't sue power world and they had three years to sue power world um, that's, you know, a good sign that they're not gonna. There's a lot of nuance here that you guys have to understand. And again, I'm not really on, I, I don't have like a specific camp with this. Like I like Power World. I think it's a really good game. I'm not a legal expert. I studied law in uh, college, but I, 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 you know, civil matters in Japan weren't exactly part of my expertise. But, <laughs> but um, what I will say is that for the monster taming genre and for this channel, if Power World succeeds and continues, that's great. We can make more content about the game and continue to push the genre further. If Power World did get shut down, let's say, because of all this, as much as that would suck and, you know, because it's a fun game, um, the monster taming genre, if anything, would get more interest because of the success of Power World and we'd see more games try to take its place. And, and all in all, like either way, we're fine here on, on, on the Gym Leader Ed channel in the monster taming sphere. So I'm not looking at this from like some super biased perspective, like either way, like we're good, right? But the thing that I think is going to matter a lot in this situation is not the fact that they haven't done anything thus far. It's the fact that Power World has literally broken through a barrier that none of us thought it honestly would. Um, I was expecting, Tem uh, you know, Power World to outsell Temtem, but, you know, you know, not be that crazy. Like, Temtem had a max of, like, 40,000 concurrent players. I could have seen Power World hit, like, 100,000 and be, like, a, you know, semi-popular game that a lot of people know about, but is still kind of niche. But this thing is breaking, like, th th this isn't even, like, breaking monster taming records. This is breaking mainstream gaming records. So that could be part of it. Maybe, you know, Power World has a little more resources than your average uh, modder or fan game um, developer. So maybe they were holding back on doing anything about it because if a legal battle did ensue, it would be a waste of money. But now that this much money is involved, maybe they're, you know, changing their stance. And uh, also, like, just because they didn't go after them right away again, issuing a DMCA to, like, some random modder is completely different than going after an entire company. So they could still sue, they might not sue. We don't really know. And I, I think there's a reason they didn't name the game because they don't want to like be in trouble for causing drama for them or, you know, potentially defaming them. Because again, like there has been a lot of like just craziness with this whole situation. And I think a lot of people need to chill. If Nintendo sues, that doesn't mean they, they're right right they it doesn't mean they're right from a copyright perspective you know at, at least when it comes to stuff like this we need to take the innocent until proven guilty thing we, we need to just chill wait for a verdict then we can decide if things are truly copyright infringement if you want to you know uh critique these designs and say you know oh i find these designs uninspired um 
I find them to be too too uh, close from a from an artist's perspective. I don't like them. That's totally fine. But don't make claims based on the legality of these designs. If you're not, if, if the verdict hasn't come out and you're not someone that that has like an expertise in law. I studied some law in college. I'm not an expert on it, and I'm Canadian, so my <laughs> anything I learned isn't really super relevant. But I at least know enough not to just jump the gun and give my uneducated opinion on something that I don't know about. So all I'm going to say, guys, is we got to wait. We got to wait and see what happens. And uh, I'll keep you guys up to date on all that. I'm going to keep pushing monster taming games, uh, you know, outside of Pal World as well forward. Because just because Pal World is killing it doesn't mean the genre is suddenly mainstream. We need to get more consistent um, like good selling monster taming games, even if they're not breaking world records like power world currently is so stay tuned if you want to stay up to date on all that stuff and i'm sorry if this video was kind of ranty i just had a lot to say and uh, other than that peace out